Welcome to B News Weekly Special Report. I'm Phil Gallagher with my guest today, Bob DiCiara, who is a freelance photographer, uh, among other things, for USA Today. He's a 1982, or is it 84? 82. 82, just 82. a youngster. 1982 <laughs> graduate of Burlington High School. So, uh, you've done a lot of shooting, obviously. Um, let's start from the beginning. You got out of high school. Uh, how is it that you fall into this business, ultimately? So, you know, going through high school, I, was, I, I always took creative classes, technical drawing, mechanical drawing, but when I graduated, I had no idea what I wanted to do. It took me probably 10 or 15 years to realize when I was working at Leahy Clinic that, you know, uh, one of the departments I was working in, every year for Christmas, we would have a Christmas party, and me and one of the optometrists would get together and kind of put together brochures and whatnot, and there'd be graphics and whatnot and clip art and... So my design interest started from there. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. I like this and started, you know, doing more stuff, um, pamphlets, brochures for the department, things like that. And then uh, it, my design background kind of just went from there. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, you know why children, uh, you know why adults ask children what they want to be when they grow up? Because adults are looking for ideas, right? right absolutely. <laughs> I, I mean, I had no idea what I wanted to do. All right, it just, so you it took a, me forever to realize that. So you get a graphic design background. How, do, uh, background, how does that segue into photography? So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the guys in the business of graphic design that I followed, blogs, um, whatnot, were also photographers. They would always talk about photography in their blogs and it started piquing my interest. Oh, you know, they're designers. I'm a designer. Maybe I should get a camera and kind of follow in their footsteps. So I bought my first digital camera. Um, I, you know, I went into Ritz camera with a couple thousand dollars, knew nothing about Canon or Nikon <laughs> and ended up getting a Nikon D80. And it just, I started from there. I started, you know, buying books, reading books, learning how to use the camera. <laughs> Um, and started shooting anything, anything around the house. And, and, and if I look at those photos today, I'm like, oh my God, what was I thinking? They're just so <laughs> bad. But, um, and, and then I started shooting my son's Little League baseball games. So my a sports segue career. into the my, sports career. Right, huh? exactly. So that's how it started. So I did that for a couple years. And I also had a, a background in web design. So I would shoot the games. I'd load them on a website, send the link to the parents. Mm -hmm. And they loved it. They're like, this is great. You know, they get to see their kid. Um, and one year I had uh, posters made up of all the kids. I took action shots and then had posters printed and gave them during one of the games. Then I'm like, oh, this is really cool. Maybe I can make some money doing this. So I just went on the internet searching for jobs for sports photographers and ended up finding a company by the name of Max Preps, which I think is owned by CBS, and they shoot all high school sports. So I got connected with them and I would go out and shoot high school games. Um, you know, it was, you made your money on sale. So you would shoot the games, you would upload the photos and hope that some of the parents would buy them. Mm -hmm. And I, so I did that with them for probably two or three years. And then when I thought I was good enough, um, I just started sending emails to Getty, AP, mm -hmm. USA Today was US mm -hmm. Press Wire at the time. Uh -huh. And um, US Press Wire answered me back, back in 2011. This was during the Bruins Stanley Cup run. And they liked what I sent them. And um, a couple of weeks later, I signed a contract. And so you bumped into them. Joe Brown in the uh, in the business around I, the neighborhood. Well, locally, yeah, <laughs> the local high school, local high school, high school sports scene. I see Joe a lot. Yeah. Joe's now, are you uh, producing some of these uh, photography slash graphic art uh, art uh, posters that we see around for the Burlington High School Club? So yes. Um, so I kind of take my graphic design background and my photography. So when I first started photography, I knew nothing about lighting, mm -hmm. how to light a subject, how to take portraits and using all lights. I ended up buying light. I bought a lighting kit from a gentleman on a, on a sport shooter website and knew nothing about, you know, portrait lighting. So knowing a lot of the high school coaches, I called Bob Concession one day. I said, Hey, coach, can I use the players and, and shoot portraits um, prior to the season? And he's like, sure. So I, I, you know, through reading books and stuff, I set up a couple of lights and, you know, and took a whole bunch of portraits and, and kind of used those graphics 
as the game day posters that I make. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I that was probably four or five years ago, and now my lighting skills have gotten so much better. <laughs> so when we did it this year, they they actually came out really nice. Oh, they well, they great. came out nice sure. last year too. Sure. But um, yeah, I've learned a lot, and I'm still learning. But it, it's great. I so mean, the, the kids love like? it. What's it like? What's it like to? Uh, uh, to be on the court, to be in the rink, to be in the football field. Well, what's the credentialing process? How do you? How so do you I, I'm credentialed through USA Today. They take care of all my game day credentials. Mm -hmm. So I'm a season credential holder with the Red Sox this year, with the Celtics and with the Bruins, which means I, ha I, are, I have a pass that I use for every game. They don't have to call and say, you know, Bob's coming to this game, write him a credential. So I already have a hard plaster credential for those three teams. So I can just go in whenever and, and do that. And you have a special, uh, can you bring a guest with you? Um, Somebody who holds your bag man? <laughs> People have asked me, but n no. no I, I'd love to, work. but. Um, so they take care of the credential part. Um, when I first started, because I'm such a sports fan, mm -hmm. and especially a huge hockey fan, I remember when I first started working my first hockey games, I'd have my camera down by my side and I'd be watching the game, <laughs> forgetting to take pictures. You just get... Because you're, you're right on the ice, you know, you're shooting through the hole in the glass and you just get, you get carried away. You're, oh, they do have a hole for oh, yeah, you, so you're so not there's eight distorted. Holes. Yes. Okay, great. So there's four in the corner and four on the sides mm -hmm. by the face-off circle. Okay. And you just have to be quick with your camera because I've seen lenses get smashed plenty of times. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you got a Bobby Orr shot yet of scoring the winning goal? Um, the I've had some decent shots, um, but, you know, it's so hard getting the shot yeah. one of the photos that i do have part of the presentation um is a really good baseball photo where austin jackson of the cleveland indians was uh flipping over the um bullpen and his legs are straight up in there that was probably one of my most iconic shots yeah. well it was one in the world series too with the cop in the bullpen uh, i forget who yeah that, that was, was uh, actually several people a yeah. guy from new york I think had the overhead shot of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was very iconic. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you were on the field for all the World Series games the last couple of years? I, 2013, yes. Uh, I, well, I, actually my spot was up underneath the Bank of America sign. Mm -hmm. So I think we had four shooters. We had one at first base, one at third base, one high behind home plate, and I was out in center field. And when they won, we all made, a, made our ways down to the field. Yeah. This year I was, right in the new Jim Beam section they have on the first base side. So I was there for every, I missed one playoff game against the Yankees. I think it was the second game, but I was there for all the Dodger games, mm -hmm. all the Houston games. So you get right on the field afterwards too in the post uh, uh, the congratulatory phase. Yeah, and well. this year, well, actually last year, I was in the locker room for two celebrations. So I think I was, when the Red Sox clinched, and I, I, I think we have a photo of that too. Um, I was in the locker room, and then when Houston beat the Sox, I was in their locker room. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was yeah. What, 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 what that was fourteen? That was last year. Yeah, last year. Yeah. Well, quickly they forget 20, the twenty eighteen <laughs> yeah, right, season. Right, right, right. Not twenty nineteen, but uh, yeah. I keep forget when I say Houston. I keep re forgetting they're back in the American League. Right, you exactly. Know, that, that for us old timers, that always messes us up. But the locker room stuff is fun. It's just, you know, it gets old afterwards. Yeah. Because you're getting, you're getting your gear all doused with champagne, champagne and whatnot, and, and it gets all sticky. and yeah. It's fun. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to experience it. Yeah. But it Once gets, is good it, enough, like Tracy yeah, Wilson exactly. trying to uh, interview uh, Brady this past Super Bowl. Exactly. You know, yeah. it's... it's uh, You've done it a couple of times, and it's, it's like, that's it. Yeah. You know, when they asked me in 2013, they're like, do you want a pin to go in the locker room? And I'm like, no, I'm all set with I'm that. I'm all set, yeah. <laughs> but because uh, we had other guys there. Yeah. When the Red Sox clinched, I was the only guy there, so I had to go in. And when Houston beat the Sox in the playoffs, I was the only guy from USA Today, so I had to do that. So I had no choice, but it was fun. It, it was so you're freelancing. Do you get other opportunities with USA Today? You get any political opportunities? Uh, no, I'm fires, just. Fires. We fire. have guys that cover that stuff. Okay. So I'm just strictly sports in this market. Mm -hmm. So in the Boston market, uh, there's probably four other shooters. Mm -hmm. So we kind of rotate games. Right. And uh, were you at the parade? 
Not for the Patriots. Yeah. Um, I was there for the Red Sox parade. Yeah. I was there for two of the Red Sox parades. Which, Another thing we'd just as soon watch on TV rather than get hit with beer I, cans. I, you know, squash. I had to dodge a few beer cans for the World Series parade this year. Yeah. It was it was a little combat zone. You had to you had to keep your head on a swivel. Well, if you got a million and a half people, a million and a quarter people, what is the percentage? percentage that you're likely to get the morons in there yeah you know, it's, always a, a, it's a shame but uh i'll tell you it's it's an experience my yeah. first one was unbelievable just yeah. to see everybody that up close was just like wow this is really cool yeah yeah well for those of us who had to wait 60 years <laughs> whatever number of years it was i can't recall now well no. i've been lucky i i've i've been there for two world series Last year, I was one game away from an NBA Finals mm. when Cleveland beat Boston in Game 7. seven. Yeah. And in 2013, I probably should have been there for the Stanley Cup Finals, but yeah. they opted to go with somebody else that had more experience than me. So. Well, you're shooting these things, so you've had a lot of experience. But mm -hmm. the, all of the, you know, the most of us who, who aren't going to this many games. Yeah, who, what are the impressions of the players? Who are the players that come <laughs> in your mind as, as uh, some people special? Uh, well, people always say hockey players are the nicest guys. I'll, I'll totally agree with that because they really are. Mm -hmm. They're great people. Um, I, I feel that they treat us just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, not, nothing against any of the other sports. I just don't interact with as many players as I do with hockey players because mm -hmm. um, we see them all the time where you know, our setup is right on the third floor. And that's the, the ice level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always come and pass them, whatever. A lot of times I'll take photographs of them coming in. And they're generally really nice guys. Mm -hmm. um, I, just, I just don't talk to the baseball players. I don't know. Maybe they just make me nervous for mm -hmm. whatever reason. I, I talk to, actually, where I'm, when I'm set up on the third base side, I'll hang out in the visitor's dugout a lot, just killing time and whatever. And, um, I mean, I've had conversations with Mariano Rivera, Great guy. Right, yeah. um, we hate him. Evan Longoria. <laughs> I mean, I always, I, like, I, I'm not afraid of the visiting team yeah. for whatever reason. It's just, right. the, I don't know, maybe because it's the Red Sox or the home team or whatever. Right, but, right. Uh, a little hero worship mixed in there. I mean, I have actually <laughs> did talk to Brock Holt a couple of times last year during the playoffs, and he, he was really cool. Yeah. But um, I think for the most part, most of the guys, the basketball players are the guys that really make me nervous because they just, some of them just don't like to be photographed mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. You know, well, they're a lot closer to the fan base, too, uh, which I think makes them uh, a little bit more nervous about, you know, what's going on, interaction with the fans. You kind of know, too, over the years who you can photo who you can get up close to to photograph and who you can't. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, a couple seasons ago, Adam Jones of the um, Baltimore Actually, Orioles. Oh, that Adam. Yeah. 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 Um, he was coming out of the dugout and I was, you know, had my camera up and started snapping away. And he's like, no photographs. It's like no pictures. I'm too important. And I'm like, that's it. I'm never gonna. <laughs> I'm never gonna aim a camera at him again. <laughs> and um, well, it is a personal thing. There's no question. It, about and Kyrie it. Irving too yeah. during the national anthem. So during the national anthem at, at basketball games, a lot of us photographers will go up by the players and take a picture while they're you know have their head down and whatever. And Kyrie hates that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I was told that Kyrie's not a big fan of that, so I kind of just stay away from him now. What's the what's the uh, chat in the garden? Are we going to keep Kyrie? Or are we going to send him packing? Uh, it's a good question. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, <laughs> it's whatever Kyrie wants to do. I mean, I think everybody would love to see him here. To see him up close, he's just a phenomenal player. He is. He's There's unbelievable. No There's no Same question. with LeBron. I've never seen LeBron up close and... The guy's just a monster. Yeah, it's it's incredible seeing these guys. He's grown the talent on the basketball court. Yeah, I mean, football play, seeing Brady up close and, and seeing those guys, it's... it's yeah. People it's, don't really realize how big Brady is. I mean, he's... Brady's a, big, but Gronk, yeah. I think, is bigger. Oh, yeah, Gronk he's a couple is, inches yeah. bigger. Yeah, but then they get the basketball players, too. There's a couple of guys. Um, I want to say the Hornets. I, I, it was a couple weeks ago. I remember I was talking to the, the video guy next to me. Um, I got stepped on four times in the first quarter, which is a lot yeah. you know i've been run into and bowled over a couple of times but never stepped on four times so you're in under the first the quarter now where i'm where i sit where our usa today spot is it's in direct line if someone's coming in for a layup and they overshoot the basket they're running right into us because we're so close yeah right. we're one of the from what i heard the garden where our spots are are one of the closest to the actual baseline of the court right 
And you know the refs step on us all the time because yeah. we're that we're that close. Oh, well, I've it's, seen some some it's... real collisions back there. Yeah, you know? and you got a six foot ten, six twelve. I don't want Semi Ojale, who's, yeah, who's right. a gorilla, yeah, all right. kneeing me in the head. Yeah, no, yeah. no, thanks. But yeah, twenty two years old, and I mean he's built like LeBron. Yeah, you know? some of those guys are really big, and their feet are like this, yeah. and it hurts. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, somebody steps on you, you feel it. Right, right. Um, if they fall on you, can you imagine? Being fallen on by Shaq in the old days? No, no. <laughs> I think the biggest, I know Tatum has fallen on me. Isaiah Thomas fell on me last year. It was funny because it was on the broadcast. They replayed it, yeah. and Tommy Heinsohn was making fun of, I don't think he was making fun of me directly, yeah. but he was saying, oh, they got to move the photographers back, get them out of the way. And yeah. It was pretty funny. Yeah, was and then Mike Gorman was guy. kind of supporting. He's like, oh, he's only doing his job. And <laughs> I have it on video on my phone. Yeah. It's, it's pretty funny to, to watch. So we got a bunch of photographs. Oh, before we go there, uh, you're you're a golfer. We've played together. Yes, you're a, we have. Uh, you're also a boxer at this point. Uh, well, I'm just working out. Working out. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's, it's a good way to of, burn some calories. Trying to get rid of that middle roll. Really good to be my. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a battle anymore. It's a war. It's all diet. Yeah. That's that's. You just got to watch what you eat. So, um, when you, when you start your golf career. As soon as the snow is gone and the course opens. No, no, I mean, where did you... Oh, where, where did, did I start? Begin? Yeah. You know, I started late. I, um, I remember one of my buddies that I lived next to growing up was, loved golf. And... Um, Who was that? Give us a plug for <laughs> Mike Gerard, quality painting. <laughs> <laughs> great, he, great baseball player, he, too. Very good baseball player. Yeah. And hot, great Hockey athlete. Too, yeah. But he, like, when... So I lived four houses away, and... He would always hit balls in the side of his house, and I'm like, oh, golf, man, this is such an awful game. And he, we'd be downstairs in his basement, and he'd be watching it, and I'm like, this is like the worst thing. <laughs> watching paint dry. I don't know how I got into it, but I started golfing with another buddy that lived up the street from me, and we would go to Pine Meadows. And that's where it all began. Uh -huh. I started playing at Pine Meadows, and I just got hooked. And I'm the type of guy that like always wants to get better. And... And, and, you know, you hit one good shot, you want to come back for more. Right, right. So the house where I grew up on Evergreen Ave, and my mom's still there, we had a long patch of grass that went right into the backyard, and I used to hit balls into the woods all the time. <laughs> and, you know, a few times I would shank them off the house, and she'd come out and yell at me. But um, <laughs> A few times. And that's shank. how it all started, <laughs> yeah. and, and I just loved it, and I couldn't get enough of it. I mean, I would spend the whole day at the golf course and – just trying to work on my game to get better. Yeah, that's why I don't play at Meadowbrook up there in Reading because condos are so close. Oh, I'm well. either hooking them or yank, shanking them. Well, that, uh, yeah, the, I was a member there last year, yeah. Thompson Country Club. Thompson, that's yeah. what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's some condos that are literally almost like right on the golf course. <laughs> yeah, right. I've, I've hit a couple. Hit a hook, hit a big hook. Uh, yeah, big yeah hook. I've, I've, you know, I think we all have. They're yeah, right there. Right. It's expected. So you're down to a six, huh? So you got seven. A, seven. Oh, seven, okay. Yeah, oh, already he's negotiating. Yeah. I was just trying to get I'm nine shots. I'm just being shots. honest. I'm being honest. <laughs> I was just trying to get nine shots, and I'm only getting eight, huh? I, I used to be a five, mm -hmm. and um, I started last year at a ten, mm -hmm. and uh, ended the season at 7.1. Yeah. So. yeah, and your trend. It's hard to, once you get in single, di single digits, to make yeah. that one. It, it's putting and chipping. Yeah, that's it. Because if you can, you, you know, I... I ended up last year playing pretty well. So mm -hmm. I was pretty much down the fairway. And for a small guy, I can hit it pretty decent. And it was just a matter of, you know, chipping it close if I missed the green and making a one putt yeah. or a two putt at worst. Yeah. You know, I know there was a lot of rounds where I had a lot of three putts last year. Ooh. And that will Ooh. just, you know, that'll kill your number. But, I, you know, I was happy. I, I joined Wedgwood at the end of the season, Wedgwood Pines and Stowe, which is a very difficult golf course, a lot of long holes. Right. But, um, you know, I shot... Probably four or five rounds in the 70s there, so I was pretty happy. Right. Well, you know the old adage of drive for show, chip and putt for dough. Absolutely. I mean, it, it all comes down to your short game. Right. When a you're poem. a half-decent golfer, it really does come down to putting and chipping. Yeah. I, I wrote a poem yeah. last year after a particularly bad round. It was called The Dreaded Stick of Terror. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, gives you, well, we've played together. So yeah, you know we what played I last like. year. Yeah. yeah, you know what I putt like. I like Okay, uh, Bob has some photos for us, so we're going to post up number one. He's got a story for him. I hope I can remember all of them. Okay, I well, should be able let's to. see it. And our crack staff is going to shoot that for us. There so it that, is. So that's the photo of Austin Jackson flipping over the wall. Um, he didn't make the catch, um, but that was, you know, 
when I fired, so my camera shoots 11 frames per second. So I, my camera was on him as he was going over. And uh, fortunately, I, one of those 11 frames caught him, right? Yeah. And, you know, fortunately, it was in focus because, you know, <laughs> you just want to make sure that something like that's in focus. <laughs> and that picture did really well. I think that was in the Washington Times the following day and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And right. so I have a whole sequence of him. Um, but that's the picture that I posted or sent to USA Today because just the way he was vertical and his hands grabbing onto oh, the pad. That's a great picture. What do we got next? Oh, yeah. So this is some of the stuff I do for the high school hockey yeah. team. I think it was last year or maybe two years ago, um, we did a shoot with all the seniors. Mm -hmm. So this is at the Ice Palace. I set up a couple of lights, both to the side. We have one in the front. And um, that's Paul Barberi, yeah. goalie. Great marketing, a little marketing yeah, program. I yeah. shoot them at the be beginning of the year. Okay, next. Oh, yeah. The GOAT, Tom Brady, that's yeah. just, um, I think that's probably before when he comes running out of the tunnel and he yeah. kind of runs down the field. He always tries to get the crowd in the end zone riled up and just a quick frame of him doing that. Yeah. It, will, will it ever be done again? Will we ever see anything like this guy again? <sighs> probably not in our lifetime. I mean. Who knows, but he's accomplished quite a lot oh good lord i yeah. mean he's what, we've got 17 super bowls since he joined it's, the league it's and he's unbelievable in, he's in nine of them yeah. and that's incredible people well, don't even make it their whole career no, once they don't make it once yeah. and if you think about the two giant games we had the david tyree catch that's two more super bowls two more the, easily yeah, because yeah. he had driven us down absolutely at the end of the game to take the lead and then exactly the mario manningham catch yeah. out of yeah. out yeah. of somebody's grasp yep. uh, and then who, um, somebody should have intercepted the ball too. I feel one of the Asante Samuel. Asante oh Samuel. my God! Exactly. Uh, uh, we uh, won't I can yeah. still remember the hot burn yeah, from that one. Yeah, exactly. Okay, bring us up another. Oh, so yeah. this is after they clinched the division, AL champions. Yeah. Just kind of in the scrum of that's Chris Sale getting booze poured on him. Yeah. Okay, just bring him up uh, after we finish. Go ahead. There we go. This was during the playoffs last year, uh, or two years ago, Farrell. Dur this was during the Houston series. Uh -huh. Just arguing a call. Yeah. I mean, you get that stuff all the time, and those are good photos to have. Yeah. The managers yelling at the umpires. Oh, yeah, you can always write something nasty oh, about yeah, the umpire absolutely. underneath that. Just a broken bat pitcher. Oh, yeah, that's something Manny, that, isn't it? Yeah, Manny. Oh, yeah. And, you know, fortunately, this fight happened right in front of me. Oh, that and, looks like uh, a right hand going to yeah, land right hand, on the chin. Huh? Yeah, I just like the linesman's face in the background. Yeah. It's like, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? I'm not getting in the <laughs> middle of that. <laughs> uh, Kyrie. Kyrie. Just trying to make yeah. a play on the ball. Avery Bradley in X. Yeah, uh, yeah, Celtic, Detroit. They right beat there. him last night. No, no was Celtics beat. Philadelphia? Who is that? I, they beat the Pistons last night. Pistons, that's yep. who I mean. Yep. Yeah. And I forget who that is, but he's just leaping up for a catch. I don't even remember if he makes the catch, but you can see the ball on the top of the frame, right by the, oh, there it the is. white, yeah, 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 the yeah. white number twelve jersey. Yeah. LeBron, oh, there he is. yeah, not happy with a call. Just no, kinda, is, he, is he ever happy with a call? The cry. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. Good player though. Yeah, he's he'd be in, even better if he was playing for us. Right. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I'd love to have him. Uh, and that's LeBron Duncan over Isaiah. Just kind of a mismatch. And you can see Isaiah trying to tackle him. It looks like, it looks like a, a, a cornerback trying to take exactly. some point. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Here's David. Yeah. This must be a redemption Price. tour here. Um, that may have been. Yeah, I think this may have been this year. I think he just got out of a big inning and showing some emotion. Yeah. You always have to look for that as a photographer. Yeah, you right, know, if right. somebody gets out of a big inning or something, you just want to focus the because you know they're going to give you some. Yeah, there was a there was a great uh, NFL films uh, piece recently on the Super Bowl where uh, uh, Edelman's going to make a third down catch. He makes the catch and he, he's going down, and three guys hit him. And I mean, he looks. I'm thinking to myself, "Oh my God, he's he's toast," you know. And he gets up and he does one of these. He goes, <laughs> that's that's what you have to look that's for. What you're looking for. You know, a lot of times, um, you know, I missed the shot, and, and that happens. But you really have you got to think ahead. Mm -hmm. You kind of it's like baseball. You kind of have to know the situation. 
Right. You right. know, big situation. Big Bases situations. Loaded. Right. Exactly. You know, Where's the play going to go? Three and two. You better be snapping all those shots. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. All right, so what's in the plan going forward here? We've had, let me see, we've had 12 championships of some sort in the last... I'm hoping for years, right? a Bruins, another finals. Mm. I mean, to be able to shoot the Stanley Cup finals would be great. It would be fantastic. Have them win it and, and, and shoot the parade would be awesome. Yeah, well, let me see. The ownership, uh, we've got Kraft for the Patriots. We've got the John Henry for the... Red Sox for the Celtics. We've got Wick. And Wick is great, by the yeah. way. Is he Wick? He thing? one of the nicest owners you'll ever meet. Really? I sit right in front of him, and you know he goes out of his way and shakes my hand. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Just he's just a regular guy. He's well, just he's one of the nicest, nicest guys. That ownership has really, uh, you know, they're in it to win it. Apparently, right, right. Uh, and Ainge has done such a great job. Although it's time to convert uh, all of this capital that he has into uh, I mean, they have a great team now they're just not playing well as a team they have i mean hayward's healthy yeah you yeah. know um i think baines is the only one that's hurt um well but, Rogier was up baines was out and Kyrie was out last night and right they still right. won yeah which gives i think is a testament to but even when they were all healthy depth. and all playing they were still losing games at the, yeah. i was at a game what game was i at the other night they lost 28 point lead Against L.A. Uh, yeah, against the Clippers. Yeah. I mean, how does that happen? And then they get Brondo beat him in uh, well, the last yeah, second. Yeah, that Doesn't was, I it. think that was, a, that was, I think a lot of luck had to do with it. Because if you look at the play, the ball bounces three times before it lands in Rondo's hand. All right. they need to do is get the ball, have it bounce one more time. The game, the clock expires. He yeah. doesn't make that shot. Yeah, but I mean, they had an 18-point lead. Right, exactly. You know? But I think even to have a 28-point lead, that's just. That's well, the acceptable. problem seems to be they have too much talent. I mean, you know, I think had... there's just clash of personalities. I don't, I think, you know, I, I just, you know, when I'm reading the papers and here and there's just issues in the locker room and whatnot, mm -hmm. a lot of guys are probably not happy with other guys and a lot of selfishness. Well, that's why I'm not crazy about re-signing uh, Kyrie. <clears throat> um, you know, we got a lot of talent coming in. And, you know, the problem <laughs> is you had last year's team, a young club, Rozier, Brown, and Tatum yeah. all getting meaningful minutes right. in Game Seven of a, right. con a conference final. Now right. it wasn't; they would have got wasted by the uh, by Golden State, Golden just State. as yeah, Cleveland exactly. did. Right. But now you've got uh, somebody like Brown, who's in his third year, yeah. really re ready to blossom as a high-profile talent, mm -hmm. and he's got to be playing 20 minutes a game. Yeah. And Tatum's minutes are cut down too. So um, they're probably going to lose Rogier this year. He's a free agent. Yeah. Um, uh, Kyrie, either or. You right. can't get any more money from anybody right, else, right. right? So, I mean, I'd hate to see him go all in to the tune of a couple of first-rounders, Tatum and Brown mm -hmm. for Anthony Davis. Right. And then have Davis go down with a twisted ankle for, you know, it's 60 It's a chance games. to take, you know, exactly. Yeah. You just don't know. And they've got, what, four, four first-rounders this year. Do they? Yeah. So I think they've got Sacramento's, they've got Philadelphia's, they've got... Uh, their own and their some well, other the future's one bright, traded. but they want to win now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I can believe it. Yeah. Uh, they signed Smart. Um, you know, that's another issue. I mean, yeah. Smart. When, I think he was 0 for 23 until last night. And then he explodes for like 15 points in yeah. the fourth quarter. He's a streaky player, but yeah. I think he, you know, I, he's um, he's a hustler. Mm -hmm. You know, he makes a lot of. I mean, he sacrifices his oh, body he's a to make. Player. Yeah, There's he's no a great defensive player. It. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of those guys streaky this year. There's games where I've seen Gordon Haywood, you know, miss so many shots. It's like, all right, what was all the buzz about Gordon Haywood? He hasn't shown me anything. Yeah. And, well, I think, uh, you know, Haywood in particular needs a little more slack. Maybe by, you know, the end of the season. He's starting to show. Actually, I think he had 27 last night. Oh, right. He's had a couple of pretty good games. Uh, but, you know, that it was a horrific injury. So I, you Yeah, know, well, that's what we were talking about that the other day that he's probably never fully recovered from it yeah. mentally. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad I wasn't there to see that. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, it was the first game of the season. It was right. within the first minute, and, uh, you know, I, I couldn't even look at yeah, it. Yeah, that I, would make I, me I just, squeamish yeah. if I saw that in yeah, person. Yeah, absolutely. It was like Montana when he broke his... Uh, yeah, I, I can't even, you know, all that stuff's on YouTube now. I can't even go there and watch that. No, I, no. I re still refuse to watch uh, Haywood's injury. Yeah, me too. I, I don't like seeing that. Well, unfortunately, that brings us to the conclusion of the program. I'd like to thank our guest, uh, Bob DiChiara. 
Thanks Freelance for having me. Photographer for uh, USA Today. We'll be looking for your items. Thank uh, you. 1982 graduate of Burlington High. We like to always tout our uh, famous, near famous, <laughs> or not so famous. I'm, I wouldn't say famous. Just, <laughs> a, just an 82 grad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you.